We're marking our 45th year, but it's no cause for celebration. There's a rough sleeping crisis in this country that stretching homelessness services like ours to breaking point. More and more people being driven onto the streets as the holes in our social safety nets widen. Um, we take, on average, 80 to 120 calls a day between a team of four and some volunteers. I think one of the most memorable calls as helpline project manager um, that's always stuck with me was taking a call out of hours from a lady who the night previous had returned to her property with her six-year-old daughter um, and found that locks had been changed. She spent the night sleeping rough in a derelict cafe with her six-year-old daughter, who it was her birthday, um, and she was absolutely broken. Um, fortunately, that woman was helped by the council to be accommodated, um, but as you can imagine, that's a real tough call to take. Each year, I've seen the number of calls that we take increase significantly, um, and the, the issues that people are facing, such as homelessness. It's not isolated to, to any one demographic. Um, the threat of homelessness is, is there for everyone. You know, often the people that we support on the streets have, they've lost everything. They've not just lost their home, they've lost their friends, their family, their, their ID, everything about them. Porchlight will um, often be the kind of the last sort of service that's out there reaching out to these individuals. The long term aim is to help them find secure, safe accommodation that's suitable for them. But there's so much that has to be done before you can get to that point. We hear stories all the time about um, people that have been attacked or have had their stuff stolen or set fire to um, and so when we move them into our accommodation um, and gradually see them re like, regain their confidence um, and start to trust in you, that's really um, something special. Once um, someone has moved into our accommodation, it's not just a roof over someone's head, um, which obviously is a really good first step, but we want to be able to equip people with the skills to live independently and to sustain that as well. Every person is different and everyone has something to offer. It's just that some people have had different opportunities than others. And so to be part of someone's journey and to see them regain their confidence and to start to thrive is amazing. It's really rewarding and actually quite humbling. We're asking a lot of the people we work with to talk to us and build up that rapport and to tell us things that they may not feel comfortable in telling us. Um, a lot of the time as staff we might struggle to understand how our service users act um, or behave or you know have ways of managing their emotions that we may think aren't too healthy or good for them. Um, with trauma-informed care it's about understanding the behaviour and linking it to previous experiences that people we work with may have had. We get everybody together and we enjoy some food together, we might do some games or some workshops around motivation or working as a team, communication and this builds skills and confidence that they can take into going into work. A lot of the time because of the stigma, there's the preconceived ideas that people's potential isn't realised. So, you know, we would look to really sort of bring that out of somebody and um, show that to an employer that these people have great skills and great attributes that they can take to a job. I mean, resilience, you know, um, being resourceful, all of these things are great attributes to take to an employer. My job basically entails going out to people in the community that are isolated and finding it really difficult to engage, prevent 
before cure for sure if people start looking after their well-being they start connecting with others they start learning something new they start enjoying what's there looking at what's there being mindful people really think that their self their worth is so little but actually people have got so much to offer you are brought up or in a community that has pretty strong social, religious or cultural backgrounds that can lead to homelessness if your friends or family don't support um, the way you are or the, the way that you've decided to come out or in terms of your transition. It would be great if Porchlight wasn't around in 45 years time because that would mean that the job had been done. It would be great if we could see a future where housing was truly affordable, uh, that matched benefit levels whilst allowing people to still work and support their families. So we need two things to happen. One is we need to build more houses, we need to build more social housing, and we need to look at the issues that are generated through shortfalls in benefits and we need to look at the type of communities that we want for the future. Communities survive if they've got the motivation and the support they need. They crumble when poverty and crime take over. And the fact that we are located in the most expensive part of, of England, in the southeast, um, we have high land, land prices, high house prices and incredibly high rents. So along with welfare reforms, one of which was to freeze benefits, we have the perfect recipe for an ongoing problem unless we can get together and sort it out. To have a tolerant society, a fair society that sees people for who they are and stops discriminating against people who are homeless would be the best outcome possible.